What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to the Bottom at Christmas Challenge here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are doing good. Of course we are back with Burnley. We were born at Christmas. We're still bottom now at the start of March. It's really not been going that great, has it? Well, maybe it can go a little bit better today. We've got three games. We've got Arsenal at home, Brighton away, Manchester United at home. Realistically... If I can get three points from these next three games, I'll be a very happy bunny. A win against Brighton is perhaps the most likely way to do that. Of course, last episode, we did muster a 4-4 draw against Crystal Palace. And I'm back from my holiday now. I've read the comments on the first six episodes. They were kinder than I expected them to be. And uh, I saw lots of different tactical suggestions. And there was some that I was like, yeah... I really wish I could do that, but there are reasons that I can't. So one thing that I saw people suggesting was, Jack, play five at the back. Play three centre-backs, maybe wing-backs, maybe just full-backs. Um, I can't really play that simply because we don't have enough centre-backs, basically. With uh, Tarkovsky out injured and out for two to nine days, at least immediately we're going to be short on centre-backs. I mean, you can see here we've got Gibson, Tarkovsky, Long and Ben Mee. And that's kind of it for centre-backs. And I don't feel like four centre-backs for a free centre-back required system is ever really going to work. You're always going to have issues, you know, actually having three fit centre-backs. And it's something that we almost find ourselves in a uh, kind of a problem with already. Another thing that I saw people suggest was, Jack, play a five-man midfield. And again, uh, the real issue there is that we just don't have the centre midfielders to do that. And that definitely I think to an extent comes down to me and my own personal errors not signing enough centre midfielders and actually investing perhaps a little bit too high up the pitch in terms of wingers and uh, you know in terms of strikers um, so that's kind of off the cards as well I could debatably try and play it but I feel like it would always be a bit of a struggle now equally I don't know exactly how I feel about this current kind of 4-4-2 system but given the fact that we did just score four against Crystal Palace, I feel like I kind of have to stick with it, at least for today's episode. I'm not going to get too reactionary about the results against Arsenal and Manchester United. It's very much going to be the game against, I think, Brighton that determines how I feel about this system going into the end of season running. Because to be frank, we are very much up against it uh yeah we have nine games left of the year we're still on only 17 points fortunately for us it's been a very low points scoring season but with brighton up in 16 for loss against them would well pretty much secure them safety you'd imagine i do feel like it's worth just mentioning that with this series i do feel like i got very very unlucky in taking over at christmas you take over the club just after the halfway point in the season about 20 21 games in i think it is maybe 22 23 uh, but the long and short of it is it's beyond halfway through the season and just in terms of the way the fixtures were laid out you can see the team started if we look here with games against huddersfield against watford um who have struggled this year and against a few other strugglers um and Really, what's happened is you can see they've played the likes of Cardiff and Fulham down here. A lot of the fixtures that we've had really haven't been against the teams in and around us. You know, we've not actually taken on Huddersfield. We've not actually taken on Cardiff. Uh, Watford we beat, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed, we did. We beat them 2-1. Uh, but obviously, we've had this extremely, extremely tough run of results, which is going to come to an end today. But it almost comes to an end a little bit too late. Just the way the fixtures have kind of worked out. And it's a weak as hell excuse. And I definitely don't think it can be used by any means to justify just how poorly we've done. But equally, I do feel like it's a sword that I, I want to fall on. I, I want to use that as the, the thing to blame. In terms of the team for today's game, I'm actually going to go with the same team that started the game against Palace. Which had a little bit of rotation. We brought in players like Bogle here who we signed... Uh, to play right back. Obviously at left back Stephen Ward we brought in ahead of Charlie Taylor. And yes we didn't play that well defensively. But equally going forward players like Andy out on the left actually played quite well. And so I'm kind of keen to see how he can do. Sisto out on the right and obviously Wood and Barnes lead in the line. And uh, well we're going to be starting off here with a game against Arsenal. Let's be honest it's not an easy game. It's, it's really not an easy game. The fact is at home makes me think hmm... Maybe we can try and make this a little bit difficult for them. Equally, 
I feel like, do I want to play an attack? That's now what I'm just questioning myself. Do I want to play an attack or do I want to drop our players just a little bit deeper? Hmm. I wonder. We could play inverted wingers. Now I look at it, that is actually an option that we could do. We could play inverted wingers on attack just to have them a little bit deeper for today's game. I did see, you know, the different YouTube comments about the systems. Obviously, I've talked about why there's a few that I don't necessarily feel entirely comfortable playing. But people did mention the fact that my team perhaps was getting a little overrun in midfield. I'm inclined to agree. And uh, so with that in mind, I feel like it only makes sense really to change things up. And actually, inverted wingers was something that we started with. Um, it's going to make us a bit more compact defensively, you know, with two flat lines of four. And we'll have to see how things go. But anyway, early on here, it's not looking particularly good. Arsenal have had one clear cut chance, which we did hold fair against, I will say. But with 10 minutes gone, we're already on the back foot. Although, we have had a few shots. So we've got that going our way at the very least. Also, maybe it's just because I've been away a little while. The lighting in this particular match looks really nice. In Football Magic, sometimes the weather just makes the match engine look good. And this is one of those days where the, the match engine looks really, really nice in this sun. And while Wood looks really nice running down the left, immediately gives the ball away. That that not so nice. I've come back from my vacation. I've recorded, obviously, the six episodes that you saw previously before going away in the space of about two days. I just sat down and played for about six hours continuously, pretty much, across two separate sessions. Um, I've had a bit more of a think, and I've not changed anything tactically, and that does largely boil down to the result against Palace, I'll be honest. If we'd lost that game... Maybe there's more panicking, but as some of you guys mentioned in the comments, there's no point in over-changing things. I think in Football Manager, one of the worst mistakes you can make is kind of just panic changing for the sake of it. Something that I've definitely been guilty of here at Burnley. With that in mind, and the fact that we played okay last game, I kind of just want to stick with this. Well, we have a chance. Westwood, free kick, hits the woodwork, rebound for Barnes. I mean, it's an opportunity. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a great opportunity. We've hit the woodwork. I mean, that in itself is almost an achievement as far as we're concerned. Can we get given half points for that? Is that something that we can have? <clears throat> I mean, even getting into half time at 0 0 would be a, a little victory as far as I'm concerned. And we're going to do it. I mean, can, maybe maybe this 4 4 2 can still work. I know lots of people are saying, you know, maybe you need to change it. And you're probably right. I probably did need to change it. But it's worked okay here. And it worked okay against P Palace. And I want to believe against some weaker teams, and we have got some weaker teams coming up, it can start to click. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. The second half, we're only halfway through the game. I did praise the players at half-time. Normally I would criticise them, but given how low on confidence we've been, I don't want to pull them down any more than I need to. So just praising them, I'm hoping it isn't going to cause us to slip into complacency. His famous last words, Aubameyang's through. Immediately, a minute and 40 seconds. And why did I praise them? Answers on a postcard. A wavy with the ball through Aubameyang with the finish. And it's taken a little while for Arsenal to break us down. But break us down they have. And uh, defensively, questionable. I think is probably the best way to describe what we've just seen there. It wasn't wasn't particularly classic football. I will say, the fact that we're only 1-0 down is actually quite good after an hour. Um, in terms of what we're going to do, I think we have to just push our wide players further up at this point. I know that's going to leave us being a little more overrunning midfield, but given the situation we're in, we need to commit men forward. Both our inside forwards are on booking, so with that in mind, I'm actually going to bring in Goodmanson, and I'm going to bring in Hanani. We're going to go with a double change in the wide areas. Pushing them higher up the pitch as well, but on the support duty, they will drop back a little bit more. Equally, they can help us hopefully spearhead some attacks in the wide area. But yeah, you can see here, this is where we might have a few problems. It's just if they do kind of overload us a little bit. You can see on support, the, the inside forwards do still track back, but well, not the best marking there by Goodmanson. Now Welbeck with a chance to block Gwenduzi. I mean, is that a header by Aubameyang? Someone answers on a postcard. What was that? It was like he used the force. Like he just imagined the ball pinging off his head. And what was a not so great shot by Gwenduzi has... I mean, it's come off his knee, I think. I don't know if that's intentional. It, it came off him quickly. I mean, maybe this is where the collapse now happens. We held firm for a while. Unfortunately, at one goal down, I felt like we had to go on the attack. 
and perhaps that's been our, our downfall here. Maybe I should have stayed with the inverted wingers. They, they were doing okay for us until they scored. And now, well, Aubameyang's on the hunt for a hat-trick. He's been denied by the woodwork. Might still not be over here. Ward, get it out. No nonsense. That'll do us. That'll do us. Right. 20 minutes left. I'm going to make our last change. I'm actually going to take off Hendrik and I'm going to bring in Brugman. And that is partially done because Hendrik is tired and I quite like Hendrik. And I, I would like him to be fit. Man, if we score that free kick, you can't help but feel like this game turns out completely differently. Unfortunately, that's not how football works. You can't just kind of sit there going, man, if only, we, if only we'd scored instead of missing. Like, it doesn't, doesn't really work. And unfortunately for us... The scoreline doesn't really reflect the fact that I actually feel like in this game, we've actually been pretty competitive. Let's be honest, Arsenal away from home, never ever, oh sorry, at home, even at home, never an easy game. Gives me hope that against Brighton, a slightly different calibre of opposition, maybe we can close the gap on them a little bit. The issue we've got is that we are running out of games to win. I think after this game, we've got eight games left of the season. Barring the Manchester United game, I'd actually argue that all of the games are winnable. But, as I said going into this episode, we needed to get three wins. And we are not getting a win here. We are now going to be looking at that game against Brighton. Perhaps a little on edge, just worrying about the fact that uh, maybe we do need to, you know, just, you know, get a performance. I mean, we have to, basically, at this point. I don't know if we will be sacked here. I imagine we will be, just because the board's expectation, I think, was a respectable league position. Kind of mid-table, which... I'm going to be honest, I feel like that was a little unattainable. I, am, I, am I allowed to say that? I wonder if it's because Sean Dyche's job wasn't really under threat because he'd done so well in Europe. I mean, we could have a chance here. Hernani's hit the woodwork. I mean, we've hit the woodwork twice now. If those go in, it's 3-2. Granted, they hit the woodwork once, but let's not talk about that. I feel like that. And that might sound like I'm in denial. I think that this has been an okay performance to start today's episode. Ignoring the scoreline, we've created chances. We've had a decent amount of shots considering we're playing Arsenal. And I think if we can perform like this against Brighton, we have a chance. I really do believe that. And we're going to put that to the test. This is the bit where we now have our worst performance of the series so far against Brighton away from home. But um, no, I feel, I feel like there is... Reason for optimism. I have more optimism now than I did about two episodes ago, which is something. Brighton away is never going to be easy for us, but I think what we showed there is we can actually do okay. Now, we have gone eight matches now in a row without winning. I'm kind of amazed the board don't want to sit down and talk with me about how we've done, because it has been a little less than ideal. I mean, you can see here, eight games left of the season... Let's look at these. We've got Brighton in 16th. We've then got United who are in 2nd. Bournemouth who are in 6th. They're going pretty strong. Cardiff in 19th is going to be huge. Fulham in 14th. West Ham in 10th. Leicester in 15th. Newcastle in 13th. There's definitely winnable games in there. We have to, I feel like, get a win here against Brighton to really just kick ourselves into gear, though. That would be... Well, this is the opportunity, I almost feel like, for us to... I don't know, give ourselves a bit of the kick up the butt and maybe just switch on a little bit more. In terms of the team, I am kind of tempted just to switch to kind of our quote-unquote best 11, which does mean a bit of a change in well personnel at the back. Tolkovsky should be fit, hopefully, for the game against Brighton. It might be a little bit close for him. But obviously, Lowton, Charlie Taylor, two players who dropped. Ben Mee did play the last game, to be fair to him. But despite dropping the defence, I feel like we've still conceded a hell of a lot of goals. In tr I mean, the truth be told, look how many goals we've conceded. It's been pretty atrocious. doesn't matter how many you score. Realistically, when you concede a minimum of three goals in your last six games, you're going to struggle to get like results from those matches. It does make me wonder if maybe I do need to change things up in the midfield just a little bit. Maybe we do just go with the inverted wingers. Maybe that maybe that is the thing to do. How is Hanani as a left midfielder? He's actually okay there. He is left-footed, so we could we'd probably argue arguably uh, swap him and Sisto round. But actually, I think maybe inverted wingers is the way to go. Maybe I should just be using the system that we started with. I think we'll play with them on attack as well. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm going crazy. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I feel like I'm beyond insanity at this point. I feel like we've we've broken beyond. Andy's been playing pretty well for us, so I do want to bring him in. And Barnes's form as of late has been pretty good. Deathor has been pretty poor when we've called upon him. And we have Brugman, who's a not dissimilar player in a lot of ways, whereas Andy gives us a little bit more versatility, I feel like, in the, the midfield department. I feel like Barnes has to start ahead of Torres, who has just been not particularly great. I mean, is it worth doing it? When did I last do a team meeting? I want to do a team meeting, but I don't remember when I last did one because it's been a while since I played the save game. I'm going to... Sit Tell the players I'm not happy. I'm keen to ensure our heads don't drop. Another meeting. Okay. We, we did a meeting recently, apparently. I should have known that. I should have taken down notes. I could have checked it myself. But that would be too logical to check. Apparently, we don't have coaches in the tactical and defending thing. Is that something that's always been the case? That would explain a lot. That would explain a lot. I mean, I'm not going to use it as an excuse because tactically we've been a little all over the shop, let's be honest. But let's get our... I, I feel like that might be a case of one of our staff members being poached because I am I I feel like one of you would have rinsed me in the comments for that kind of news item repeatedly appearing and me ignoring it. And equally, I feel like I would have acknowledged it and changed things up. Anyway, a few teams playing their extra game here. We are not one of them. We are not one of them. We are looking forward to that Brighton game. They're in 16th. We need a win. We need a win so badly. So, so badly. We've we've got to beat them. We've just got to. If we, if we don't beat them, despite the fact that I do feel like genuinely our last few games are fairly winnable, it would be fair to say... The dream, the dream would probably be dead in terms of staying up. And then the question becomes, can I keep my job? If I do keep it, do I want to stick with Burnley in the championship and try and turn things around? Because this is an old squad. I say that. It's got a lot of players in its mid to late 20s. But, you know, in terms of the average age, I feel like he's definitely up there for the Premier League. You can see there's not that many players under the age of 24. If you were to compare the average age to our Leon squad... I feel like it would be pretty stark, the contrast. But anyway, let's get into this game. Andre Mariner is the referee. Maybe he can give us a gift. Tarkovsky has not won his race back to fitness, so he is going to get dropped. Gibson will come onto the bench. The rest of the team, though, is okay in terms of fitness. So this is what we're going to go with. We are going to play 4-4-2. We're going back to what we started with. They're playing 4-4-2 as well. I feel like on paper we have the better team. And so with that in mind, I feel like matching up 4-4-2 versus 4-4-2. Immovable force versus... What is it? Unstoppable force versus immovable object. Basically, I think we have the quality to maybe roll them over here and get a few goals. Whether or not we can avoid conceding is an entirely different question. We'll see how we get on here. Brighton are a good team, but I feel, I, I feel like we've not played that badly lately. And by lately, I mean in our last two games. We still did concede four goals against Crystal Palace, make no mistake, but it could have been worse. I mean, Brighton are through on goal. This is this is not good. We've dealt with it initially, although Knockhart has missed an open goal. Reminiscent of, I think, Ryan Giggs against Arsenal. Some of you might know the miss I'm on about. It's a very obscure one. It's from a decade or so ago. We've now had our own opportunity, which has gone over the crossbar. I mean, the good news is... It's fairly even. And we've injured their player who got through on goal and missed. I don't know if that's good or not. Maybe he would have been better to keep on the pitch. 30 minutes gone. Even Stevens. We're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them at the very least. Tip for tap. Blow for blow. They've, they've done a shout. So I feel like I should do a shout in retaliation. It's a big ball over the top to uh, Andone. He's through. He should score this. He doesn't score it. Tommy Heaton. I want to give him a load of credit, but the ball's been smashed straight at him, to be frank. The finish was awful. Knockout now to whip it in. Headed over the crossbar. We we live to fight another day. Somehow, some way. We, we have to win this game. We absolutely have to win this game. I'm a little bit concerned by the few times that Brian have hit us on the break with just big balls over the top to us, over our centre-backs. I don't feel like we have the slowest defence in the world, but apparently... 
it's a problem for us. I think with it in mind, and for fear of not doing anything and just having to imagine you guys being annoyed with me, I am going to drop our defensive line just a teeny tiny bit deeper. Um, hopefully that will help with those big balls over the top. Overall, pretty good reaction from the team talks thus far. Um, we'll, we'll get into the second half and hope that we can do some more talking on the pitch. I mean, nil-nil doesn't really help us enough, I don't feel like. I feel like we have to win this game. As much as Brighton are, you know, one point above that danger kind of position of 17th, you know, where you are right within the, the, the kind of gulf of dropping down. Watford are a good team. I expect them to get some results. Realistically, with Brighton being down with us, we can't afford to draw against them and let them get points. And well, Barnes has a chance. Barnes, Ashley. Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. That was the chance, my son. He's been the man in form and he's squandered the best chance for us all game. We might have a chance here. Long free header. It was a long shot. It wasn't a long shot at all. It was, in, it was inside the six-yard box. I just wanted to make an unnecessary pun. Now they have a corner. Oh, Heaton gets it away. I don't know. If, are we going to feel like that Barnes misses a turning point in the season if he scores that? I mean, if he scores it, we'll 1-0 up. And it's a completely different kind of feeling to this game. We've not been looking particularly good across the entire midfield. And with time running slightly low, going to make some changes here. I'm actually going to take off uh, Chris Wood, who's not been playing that great. And I'm going to bring in Torres as an advance forward. And also, I'm going to bring back in Andy. We're going to bring Andy in for Sisto. Sisto, who was our big transfer at the time. The man who we pinned our hopes of safety on. He's done nothing for us. Andy's maybe our hero, though. We've got a set piece to deal with here. It's a free back post header for Lewis Dunk. It's atrocious defending. Brighton find a way through. I mean, I have to... I now have to do something. We can't lose to them. In case it wasn't obvious by how much I've stressed it today, we need a win. We really, really, really need a win. I mean, is this the pointless highlight or is there something going to come of it before we can even change our system? El Nino's there. He's not going to win a header like that, is he? And, well, mm, what to do? I was about to go more attacking, but there's now another corner. It's another set piece. Can we deal with this one? We head it half clear, but the ball back in. Hacked away. Maybe the counter-attack is on. Where is Torres? There he is. Can you get the ball over to him? Fernando, work your magic. Fernando Torres, he shoots. Hernani, rebound. He's got to score that. Why is he taking a touch? Oh, I feel like we've got really unlucky today. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not even over. It's not even over. The time's just trickling away. I've gone very attacking. Oh, we've had two clear-cut chances. We've had two great opportunities, and we've just squandered both. Maybe there's still time. Barnes to Torres. Looked good since he's come on. Not the best pass. Matthew Ryan to hoof the ball clear. I mean, we could be just bright and getting another here to rub salt in the wound. It's a big tackle by their player's name. I'm not even going to try and say And now he's chipped the keeper. It's a worldie. It's actually... It's his first goal of the season. And it's a... He's chipped the keeper from outside the box. Hmm. Am I allowed to blame my players for this game? Oh, my God. It's such a good finish. I mean, Knockout's going to score now. Free kick, and he? Just over the bar. Am I allowed to blame my players here? When people ask me, Jack, what what do you do on YouTube? What what is it? And I say football manager videos, and they go, "What is that then? Is that, is that spreadsheets?" Oh my God, Andy! I mean, I needed it sooner, but it's a lovely goal. It might be our goal of the season, but let's be honest, it's one of the few goals we've had all season. There's not like there's loads of contenders for it. But yeah, just going back to what I was saying, people ask me, Jack, what do you do on YouTube? Is it spreadsheets? 50% of it is spreadsheets. The other 50% is just shouting at dots on a screen and getting very annoyed at them. And this is this has been one of those days where I've got very annoyed at them. I mean, there's still time. Penalty! Oh, my God. We're going to miss it, aren't we? I mean, a draw here is huge. We scored in the 92nd minute. 40 seconds later, we have a penalty. I mean, Andy's the difference maker. But now Fernando has to score from the spot. He's just going to miss. It would sum up the Bob this entire series if he misses this. It just would. Please, El Nino, score. 
It's 2-2. Two, two. I mean, a draw doesn't really help us a great deal. But maybe that can spark us into life. With bad I mean, how have we done it? How have we done it? Answers on a postcard. Two goals in added time to draw 2-2 two, two away from home. I mean, maybe this can spark the survival mission. I think this 4-4-2 with inverted wingers is the way to go. I feel like it just gives us a bit more security in the midfield. I don't know how to feel about this, because I should be delighted at goals in the 93rd and 94th minute, but a draw doesn't really do enough for us. And Watford, Watford beat Huddersfield. So we've actually lost ground on the team in 17th. Oh, I mean, it's a, gra it's a great result. Look, I'm, I'm going to take the little victories when they come. And this is a little, vic it's a little draw technically, but it's a little victory to me, the way in which we've come back. I mean, Andy deserves all the credit. Squad unhappy with the situation. Andy. Too harsh when my team talks. Right, let's have a word here. Um, I'll change my approach. Look, they're very happy. They're not very happy. They're still miserable as hell when it comes to the morale. But I'm listening to the players. They thought I was too mean in the team talk. We now have a two-week gap to Manchester United in first. Oh, I mean, it's a it's a huge result. It's a huge result, that 2-2. Two, two. The, the way in which we've done it makes me feel really proud of the boys. And actually, like, with the still hope, there's still fight in the old dog yet, yet. But the fact Watford won is a bit of a problem. In fact, it's it's more than a bit of a problem. It Fundamentally, it's a massive problem. We're eight points away from safety now. We are going to need to win probably five or six of our last... How many games? Seven games left of the season? How many How many games are left? Just, just to check. Yeah. So there's seven games left of the season. I mean, we're currently eight points away from safety. Realistically, we probably have to win five or six of what's left. We've got Manchester United who are first next at home. It's it's a challenge. It's a, it's a test. We'll see what we can do against them, I guess. I mean... The fact, that, the fact that we've managed to get draws against Palace and Brighton, like, should be atrocious. Like, I should be so disappointed. But in a weird way, I'm kind of proud of the boys and what they've achieved. And also, I've got to say, Andy's goal that I ridiculed him for, and I said, well, that's pointless. I take it all back, Andy. I'm sorry I was facetious. I'm sorry I didn't believe in you. I was wrong. And I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Ben Mee's injured. It's not a long-term one, so that's good news there. Hopefully, Tarkovsky is going to be back fit. Uh, data analyst has decided to stay. Why? Why? Why do Everton want all of our kind of analysis? I mean, they're, they're not doing that good of a job for us. Clearly, what's our job security like? Hmm. Mm, deeply concerned about the tactics. I mean, how do they feel about transfers? They like some of the transfers. I like the transfers too. When we first did them, I was pretty happy. But it's not its not awful. Make board request. I want to ask for more time. My job at insecurity is very insecure. We're now playing Manchester United in first. If we get hammered against them... We might be in trouble. And potentially, the way things are going, it's very likely that next episode will be the final episode, at least, of us in the Premier League. Whether or not we're ever even given a chance of redemption, I, I feel like it'd be maybe too soon to, 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 be, to be sure. Let's be honest. Anyway, I mean, it's only Manchester United. They can't be that good. Okay, there's lots of players unhappy. Mm, I was worried when this might start happening. Um, they're not happy about the atmosphere. I agree it still needs to be done. There are many bad influences uh, that need to move on to personal issues. I can't really promise. I'm just going to tell them. I'm going to lie to them. Right. I mean, some improvements. S some imp There's more players unhappy about the underperforming. Uh, aggressive. Hmm. I think my management has been less than impressive. 
It's hard to, uh, I know things haven't been great, but it's much down to how you lot perform on the pitch. No one's blameless here. Okay, they didn't like that. I mean, I liked it. I think that was productive. Mm, I think some of those, we, we, we got off being red down arrows. They're now back on red down arrows. I mean, it's only United next. It's going to be fine. It's like a lamb to the slaughter, really, isn't it? Why, why can't it be the Manchester United of this season in real life? Then, then I'd actually feel like we might have a chance against them. Unfortunately, Chris Smalling and Jones are just gods in football manager terms. So we're probably not going to score against them. But we're at home. We did okay against Arsenal, albeit for a fairly short spell of time. I want to believe that here against Manchester United, we can show what we're all about. I mean, at this point, we're probably going to get spanked. But I want, I want to show a shred of optimism. I feel like it'd be wrong not to. So there's seven games left. So there's 21 points on offer. If we win 21 games... Well, that would be an achievement. If we win seven games and got 21 points, it would take us to 39 points. And they say 38 points is the amount you need to be safe. So if there was ever a time to start a winning run... It's now, please. We'll have to see how we get on. It's not It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It might not be pretty. It's probably going to be fun in terms of viewing for everyone but me. But we'll see how we get on. Anyway, in terms of system, I think we're going to go with what we've got here. But I'm actually going to bring in Torres and I'm going to bring him in for Wood because I think he's had Angie did pretty well that last game. He scored the penalty, which was huge for us. And I'm also going to bring in Andy, and I'm going to take bring him in for Sisto. He can play on the left-hand side, so I'm not sure why that's been highlighted as a bit red. I guess it's because we're playing Manchester United, and they've got very, very good players. Um, do I want to play really attacking against United? I genuinely believe in football manager playing defensively doesn't work anywhere near as well as just playing slightly more attacking. Just from my own personal experiences. So this is what we're going to go with. We're going to go with the 4-4-2. And we're going to get a win. I just realised I, I forgot to bring Tarkovsky into the team. That's potentially a mistake. Although, I was about to say, although defensively we've looked okay. Let's be honest. Long, who is in the team, he's, had he's headed a load over the bar. In some ways, I feel like I've lost my head here a little. With, with all the team meetings, the board getting on my back. The world's against me. I'm the victim of all of this. I mean, if we can win this, it might be able to spark a miracle starting next time out, I guess. I said I wanted three points from the three games in today's episode. We've got one so far in two. We'll have to see how we get on. I mean, looking at it, things things are okay. That I mean, we've lasted 20 minutes against the team who were top, and we're on the attack here. Barnes, what can you do? Lovely play to Hernani. Surely not. Go on, Hernani. Hendrick. Wide. Now with Charlie Taylor, what can he do? I mean, we look... This might be the most passes I've seen us chain together. It actually looks quite competent. Ball whipped in. Andy's the, I mean, Andy's the GOAT. We're 1-0 up against United who are top. It might not last, but whilst it lasts, I'm going to savour the taste of this. I think the inverted wing wingers were the right thing to do all along, based on what I've seen today. I mean, Andy apparently is better than Sisto. Andy, if I get relegated to the championship, you're becoming club captain. I've decided. He, he, he's showing spirit, is Andy. He won us the penalty and scored the goal against Brighton. I mean, United have had one shot on target so far. Underwhelmed would be the way I'd describe how, how I perceive their performance. We've had more of the ball. It's a miracle. We're, we're winning a midfield battle. I say this all. They're on the attack now. We could be in trouble. Luke Shaw whips in. Lukaku. I mean, they've got a penalty. It's not fair. I mean, how long did I get to enjoy it for? 15 minutes. I mean, Heaton. If there ever was a time to do something mad for us, this is it. He's gone the right way, but he's not been able to stop it. I love the fact that they've got Mil uh, Milovic. I could never say his name. I'm sorry, Palace fans. I love the fact they've got him and he's taking penalties for them. Oh, I feel like the keeper should stop that. He's gone the right way, bless him. Just couldn't get a hand to it. 
they now have a corner. I mean, surely not. Headed off the line. Oh, is that the end? I mean, time out, please. Time out. That will do. Right. I mean, half time, 1 1 against the team who are top. I think that's okay. Do I, do I want to praise the players? Apparently, I've been too harsh in my team talk, so I feel like I've got to just, you know, tell the players to keep it up. Barnes hasn't played that great. I'm going to take him off and I'm going to bring in Caicedo. A player who hasn't had a great deal of football, but I brought him in and he's not on small wages. Maybe he can be the big impact player. He's got experience. Hopefully he can show it. Him and El Nino up top. It's not it's not the quickest front line, I will concede. But it's two players who have seen a lot in their time, and hopefully they can come good for us here. I mean, there's 20 minutes left and it's 1-1. We're actually doing okay. I'm going to demand more from the players. United have definitely had the better of the play, but we're, we're holding on somehow. I'm going to bring in Sisto out on the right-hand side. And I'm also going to bring in Brugman for Hendrik, who's struggling a little bit for fitness. We need wins. That's the issue. We need a goal here with 10 minutes left. I mean, we're holding up okay. To be fair, they've, they've bombarded our goal in this game. And we are riding our luck. But as I said, we need a win. Maybe it can happen. Torres, what can you do? I mean, that is not the best ball, is it, in the world to Caicedo. And... We have committed a few men at the pitch here, and now you imagine United are going to look to capitalise. I mean, Lukaku, he's through, he's scored. I mean, our defence is not that slow. Lukaku is not fast, but these big balls just through the middle just seem to rip us apart. Oh, I don't even know. We played so well today in this episode. I feel like we at least now have a system that I think could work. The issue is it's taken me too long to find it and the way our fixtures have panned out, whilst yes we have kind of ridden through a storm of tricky games, there's just too much to do I think in the time we've got left. I mean there's still time here, Torres, please. Caicedo just isn't there, Torres just lacking that final ball it feels like. With three minutes left you can't help but feel like this is going to be United going up the other end and getting a third. I mean they're top of the league. And for 80 minutes, we've been the better team. I mean, what was that finish by Lukaku? It looked like he scuffed a chip. It really did. I mean... Hmm. I've gone from being optimistic and kind of being like, ah, I'm not that annoyed to actually being kind of annoyed at the manner in which we've conceded two goals here against Manchester United. Because genuinely, I don't feel like we've played that badly. Yes, they've been the better team. You expect this from them, but... The reality is that they've had three clear cut chances and just been very clinical with them all, but they've all kind of amounted from the same way, just these big balls through the middle. Ah, uh, I don't know how to feel. I mean, I feel like unfortunate. It's still a pretty good performance, in truth. But that doesn't really help us a great deal. Uh, you can see Huddersfield picked up points. Um, how did they get on? I can't see them loaded up here, but they won, and I think Watford lost. Six games left. We are nine points away from safety. I mean, it's not impossible. But we kick off things next time out with Bournemouth in sixth. As I said, the way things are playing out, next episode will almost certainly be the last episode. I might do it as kind of a longer episode special and we'll just keep going until we're safe or not safe. The way things are going, though, like we could realistically be relegated within two or three matches. Um, we, we have to win. We basically have to beat Bournemouth in the first game. It's not going to be easy against them either away from home. I guess the, the silver lining, if you can even call it that, is we have actually had a, a pretty good kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe game uh, against some big teams here. I don't feel like we've been completely outclassed. Just whilst I remember, let's get Tarkovsky back into the team. I mean, maybe he was the difference maker. Maybe having him in would have made the world a difference against United. But, um, I don't know. I feel like, genuinely, I feel like we've been pretty unfortunate here at Burnley. I know that's easy for me to say. I feel like this 4-4-2 actually has proven itself to be a tactic that could work. 
I feel like the biggest issue I've had here with this bomb at Christmas changes is I've never really had the players on my side. I've never been able to sort out morale. And that in itself is kind of a huge problem because Football Manager is massively about morale. I can't stress that enough. Like it really does, at least from my own experience, massively influence how players perform. And because we've been unable to get a run of kind of games going, because we've not really been able to grind out anywhere near enough wins, we're just in this unfortunate situation where we've never really quite got going, it feels like. But at the same time, based off what I've seen today, I've got to believe there's, there's a chance. Unfortunately, you can see here Watford have just won. So that really puts us in a world of bother because we are now 12 points away from safety. With six games left. Hmm. I mean, realistically, we have to win all six of our remaining games. And that still might not be enough. Just the way things are playing out. I have no clue if we'd even be given another season here at Burnley. The way things are going, I, just, I don't see a world in which the board give me more time. And allow me to stay on at the club. I know some of you guys would like to see me maybe try and turn it around, but I just don't know if that's going to be entirely possible. I mean, you can see here the relegation scrap. Apparently, there's eight teams in contention. Realistically, Palace are safe on 39 points, and to be honest, Fulham are probably safe on 36, and Leicester shouldn't need to worry so much, at least in terms of us catching them. I guess for Huddersfield, there's still hope that they could grind out a few results. I mean, you can see here, if we just look at our games, we've got... Uh, Cardiff to play, we've got Fulham to play, we've got Leicester to play, we've got Newcastle to play. But we have got some games against teams around us, but even if we even if we win the ball, it's probably not gonna be enough. And that's just kind of the unfortunate reality of the situation we find ourselves in. Apparently the sack looms over me, oh gosh. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Next episode is almost certainly going to be the final episode here at Burnley. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed. And I hope you join me whenever the next episode is. I think it'll be in two days' time to watch the ship finally sink. It's like being on the Titanic. I'm, I'm, I'm going down with it. I'm playing the violin. Hopefully you'll listen to my music. Guys, I'll see you again soon. If you have enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. And uh, yeah, that is all from me. It is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.